In this procedure, you will learn how to obtain a venous sample from a hand using a butterfly needle with the vacuum tube method or from an arm using a syringe method. Read the provider's order and clarify any questions with the provider. Gather the appropriate tubes, as specified on the requisition form, and all other required supplies. Put on a fluid impermeable lab coat. Verify the patient's identity using three identifiers, such as her full name, date of birth, and the spelling of her last name, or ask to see a photo ID. Hello, Tina. How are you? Good. How are good. you? I'm good. My name is Tori. I am Dr. Anderson's medical assistant. Um, if I could get your first and last name, please. It's Tina Lakin. Okay. And if you can please spell your last name for me. L-A-K-I-N. Your date of birth, please. 4-21. Explain the procedure and obtain permission for the vena puncture. Tina, it looks like Dr. Anderson has ordered some blood work for you okay. to have done today. Do you have a problem with getting your blood drawn or had any issues? No. Okay. Put on protective eyewear and sanitize your hands. Ask the patient if she has a preference which hand is used for the vena puncture. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at your hands. Does it matter which one? No, no. not really. If drawing from the back of the hand, have the patient tilt her hand down and curl her fingers around the phlebotomy chair. Alternatively, have the patient place her venipuncture hand open over the other fisted hand with the fingers lower than the wrist. Apply the tourniquet around the wrist, just proximal to the wrist bone. Do not apply the tourniquet so tightly that blood flow in the artery is impeded. Select a vein on the back of the hand that is prominent stable, and straight as possible. Remove the tourniquet and cleanse the site. Starting in the center of the area and working outward in a circular pattern with the alcohol pad. Assemble your equipment and supplies on the non-dominant side of the patient's arm. Remove the butterfly device from the package and stretch the tubing slightly. Take care not to activate the needle retracting safety device accidentally. Attach the butterfly device firmly to the vacuum tube holder using the sheathed needle at the end of the tubing. Put on disposable gloves. Reapply the tourniquet when the alcohol is dry. Hold the butterfly wings pinched in between the thumb of your dominant hand and index finger or hold the base of the needle. Remove the needle sheath. Use your thumb to pull the patient's skin taut over her knuckles. With the bevel up and the needle aligned parallel to the vein, insert the needle at a 10 to 15 degree angle through the skin and into the vein with a quick but smooth motion. After inserting the needle, do not touch the wings again until the butterfly needle is removed. Push the blood collecting tube into the end of the holder. Place two fingers on the flanges of the needle holder and use your thumb to push the tube onto the double pointed needle. Make sure you do not change the needle's position in the vein. Release the tourniquet when the blood appears in the tubing. Always keep the tube and the holder in a downward position so that the tube fills from the bottom up. Immediately after removing the tube from the needle holder, gently invert the tube to mix the additives and the blood. Place a gauze pad or cotton ball over the puncture site and gently remove the needle, engaging the safety device. Dispose of the entire unit in the sharps container. Apply pressure to the gauze or instruct the patient to do so. The patient may elevate the arm, but should not bend the elbow. While the patient is applying pressure to the site, label the tubes with the patient's name, date and time, and your initials, 
or affix the pre-printed tube labels and print your initials on the label. Check the venipuncture site to make sure bleeding has stopped. All right, let me take a look here. All right, you stop bleeding. If you can hold it for just a second, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Apply a hypoallergenic self-stick wrap, gauze and tape, or bandage. Wash or sanitize your hands. If drawing from the antecubital region using a syringe, ask the patient if she has a preference which arm is used for the venipuncture. I'd say now I'm going to get some blood from you today. Does it matter which arm I use? Um, no, not really. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take a look. Have the patient sit with her arm well supported in a slightly downward position. Use your index finger to trace the path of the vein and judge its depth. The veins most often used are the medial or cephalic veins, which lie in the middle of the elbow. You may need to look at both arms to find the vein that will give you the greatest chance of success. Apply the tourniquet around the patient's arm three to four inches above the elbow. The tourniquet should never be tied so tightly that it restricts blood flow into the artery. Tourniquet should remain in place no longer than 60 seconds. Select the venipuncture site by palpating the antecubital space. Remove the tourniquet and cleanse the site, starting in the center of the area and working outward in a circular pattern with the alcohol pad. Assemble your equipment and supplies on the non-dominant side of the patient's arm. Put on disposable gloves. Remove the butterfly device from the package and stretch the tubing slightly. Take care not to activate the needle retracting safety device accidentally. Attach the butterfly device firmly to a syringe. Make sure to loosen the plunger a few times after the butterfly and syringe are attached. Reapply the tourniquet when the alcohol is dry. Hold the butterfly wings pinched in between your dominant hand, thumb, and index finger, or hold the base of the needle. Remove the needle sheath. Grasp the patient's arm with your non-dominant hand and anchor the vein by stretching her skin downward below the collection site with the thumb of your non-dominant hand. With the bevel up and the needle aligned parallel to the vein, Insert the needle at a 10 to 15 degree angle through the skin and into the vein with a quick but smooth motion. After inserting the needle, lay the wings flat against the skin and do not touch the wings again until the butterfly needle is removed. Slowly pull back the plunger of the syringe. Make sure the vacuum you create is slow and steady and that no more than one milliliter of headspace exists between the blood and the plunger. Fill the barrel of the syringe to the needed volume. Release the tourniquet. Place a gauze pad or cotton ball over the puncture site and gently remove the needle, engaging the safety device. Apply pressure to the gauze or instruct the patient to do so. The patient may elevate the arm, but should not bend the elbow. Dispose of the entire unit in the sharps container. While the patient is applying pressure to the site, label the syringe with the patient's name, date and time, and your initials, or affix the pre-printed tube labels and print your initials on the label. Check the venipuncture site to make sure bleeding has stopped. Apply a hypoallergenic self-stick wrap, gauze and tape, or bandage. Dispose of blood-contaminated materials in the biohazard waste container. Disinfect the work area. Remove and dispose of your gloves. Then, remove your protective eyewear. Sanitize your hands. Complete the laboratory requisition form and route the specimen to the proper place. Document the procedure in the patient's record.